Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the High Performance Reflections. This week's guest is John O'Gorman, uh, the managing partner at Growth Pit Stop. In his current role, John is an ICF accredited coach and facilitator and works with organizations, business units, teams, and leaders across the world to calculate their performance potential. Recognized as one of the most exciting performance analytic companies in the world, the Grow Pit Stop leverages the latest science of psychology of performance to measure, model, and unlock performance potential. Inspired by the performance-obsessed arena of Formula One racing, John and his team demonstrate how organizations can measure their performance potential and transform performance losses into gains. John is also a co-author of six performance books, business performance books, including Pit Stop to Perform, The Grow Pit Stop, The Formula for Growth, and The Revenue Track. In his book, Pit Stop to Perform, John illustrates why organizations and teams are performing at just 64% of their full potential. In September 2016, John was appointed as Program Director of High Performance Sales and Business Development at the UCD Michael Smurfett Business School, a program designed to provide business leaders with knowledge of the theory and tools necessary to drive sustainable growth and high performance. Really looking forward to today's session, and I'd like to introduce you all to John O'Gorman. John, how are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Oh, we're good. We're all good here today, yeah. Great. Loving, loving the background. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. They're my Formula One pit lane. <laughs> great, great. So I think um, what we might do, John, I suppose, if it's all right with you, is thinking how we might, we might uh, get the best out of this session for our guests. And um, I suppose knowing a little bit about where the, the, the circles you work in and the teams you work in, in terms of kind of what we're going to discuss today around high performance, we might look at around that team aspect and that collective aspect of high performance, if that's all right with you. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Great. Um, so what we, what we might do is we might, jump, we might jump straight into the first question, so, and we'll get things kicked off. Lovely. Great. So, John, I suppose from your, from your perspective, um, what does high performance look like for you? Uh, well, I'm going to smile, and I guess you'll smile when I say this, uh, Peter, but for me, high performance is just like Formula One. So if anybody uh, watched the Formula One uh, racing yesterday uh, and they saw any of the teams doing a pit stop, um, Formula One pit stop, pit team doing a pit stop, that's high performance. Um, that's everybody get the right people in the right roles, doing the right work, all focused on one key result, which is getting, getting the vehicle back out into the track as fast as you can possibly do. So sometimes people say to us, you know, how do you measure high performance? What does high performance look like? And I, and I ask them to be curious and I say to them, you know, looking at the metaphor of Formula One, um, uh, how, can you, how can you learn from Formula One? How can you learn from applying a metaphor like uh, Formula One to your business? Um, and as you're aware, we do, we do that with teams all, all, around, all around the world. Um, there's, a, there's an interesting bent on things. You know, people talk a lot about, you know, high performance and we want a high performance team and we want a high performance culture. Um, and I think genuinely they, they do want that. But I have a question for people when they when they ask about. I, I go back with a question. I say to them, "So what do you mean? What do you mean by high performance? What do you really mean?" Um, so we we like to distinguish and help teams distinguish between what we call high performance and performance potential. Um, and in every team environment, there's loads of potential. And I think you touched on it there uh, in, in the introduction. You mentioned that most teams are exploiting, in the business world, are exploiting just 64% of their full performance potential. So if you've got a team, a business team, and you're saying, okay, ask them this question, get them to pause and say to themselves, okay, what percentage of our full potential are we exploiting? Get them to put a number on it. So I think a key place to start with high performances is can you put a number on it? Um, can you actually put a put a physical metric onto it? And uh, so you'll have the sports teams uh, all around the world, and they'll be backed up by loads and loads of data, as you're aware, and, and putting numbers on everything. Well, why in the business environment can't we put numbers around this concept of high performance? Well, we can, we can now. Um, but and in terms of you know performance and performance potential, if if your if your viewers are kind of wondering what's the difference, well, performance is what you're achieving today, and potential is what you can achieve tomorrow. Um, so I guess one of the things that, that I've learned over the years is there's always potential. There's potential in children, there's potential in environments, there's potential, there's potential everywhere. 
a lot of people talk about it. It's just how do you how do you how how do you how do you unlock it? So I guess to, for me, high performance is 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 a is, is a is a bunch of things. It's you know, have you got the structures? Have you got the culture? Have you got the leadership? Have you got the ability to execute? And you take you take that in you take that in a business 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 environment. Those 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 words land well: structure, culture, leadership, execution. But it's not one of those things. It's those four disciplines pulled together. So we say high performance is about a multidisciplinary view on things. It's complex. It's not easy to achieve. Um, I wouldn't describe it as, as it's for elite organizations. I think it's it's within the grasp of every organization. But you got to look at all those factors that come together. Those four, those four, those four key factors. And um, starts at an organizational level. It can go down into a business unit, go down into a team, and goes down into individuals. So it's so so it's it's it's, it's all it's all interconnected uh, together. I guess most um, businesses and um, leaders of teams uh, want to have high performing individuals within their teams. Well. It's very difficult to have high performing individuals within your team unless the system that they operate in um, is high performing also. So, you know, it, it, there's, there's the interconnection of those, those two things. Um, so there's, there's no one like silver bullet answer that's high performance uh, for me. But if someone's looking for uh, a picture of what it looks like, I say to them, go online, Google a pit stop um, from Formula One and you'll see a team high performing. Yeah. Um, and I think. You know the the hype of the Formula One. I love love the methodologies. You know you're using grow pit stop model, and and I think um, you know it's it's brought a lot of value to me. You know professionally, um, you know in terms of application. But I think what stands out for me most is that piece around the actual statistics and and the measurable impact. I think you know uh, a lot of high performance you know, can be subjective in terms of, you know, what, what are the factors, how much time do we need to put into each one of the factors to get what we want. Um, but in the grow pit stop model, you know, you've gone out to, you know, hundreds of thousands of, 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 of different sources to, to source this. You have all your data there. You have hard data. So I suppose that, that leads us nicely then into our next question, maybe around the actual factors of, of, of high performance, because I'm, I'm going to jump and guess that, you know, your view of, of what factors are most important is probably very much factual and statistical based. Yeah, so, so we would, you know, if I, if I talk at, at, at the highest level of, you know, you put the right structures in place, you put the right culture and behaviors in place, you've got the right leadership, and then you go and you execute. And um, so um, if you bear with me a second, then you can just visualize that Formula One team. They've got a driver, and that driver is your leader. Um, so the equivalent of a leader in an organization, you've got your team, um, and you've got your machine, your machine. So in, 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 when we're working with, with teams, we're encouraging them to think about who are the leaders, who are the teams and, and the machines are, what are their strategic projects or pieces of work that they're trying to execute against? Um, so driver, team and machine. So in every business environment, there's a driver, there's a team and a machine. Um, so th that's three, three key overarching principles. But we, 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 we break that down into 22 factors. Uh, and as you say, we measure, we measure over 200 data points. So if you've got a team of 10 people, that's now you're measuring 2000 data points. I mean, you do, do, you do, you do a multiple. So a lot, a lot of data being, being measured. And um, I'd like to pause and say to people, if you, if you could just, you know, pick up a pen and ask yourself, have you got for the team, t take a team uh, and ask yourself these questions. Have you got the right people in the right roles, doing the right work? working together in the right way, with the right resources, focused on the right rewards, and driving towards the right results. So there's a lot of factors of rights there, yeah? Um, and if you pause and you say to yourself, okay, where are the sources of, you know, performance gains, what we call it, yeah? So where are the sources of, of real strength, yeah? And if you, if you write those factors down and go, what are, what's a, what, what, where would you put a green? Okay, green means it's a source of strength. Where would you put an amber rating? Amber mean, means you're not overly, you're not 100% happy. There's some sort of performance gain there and, and give, give any other factor a red. So red, amber, green, these things. So you can quickly put, you know, in your own head straight away even from this call going, okay, where are my sources of strength? Where's my sources of, 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 of weakness or delta that need, that needs a, that needs some change or where does some performance loss? Um, and look in at that and be curious around that. And that's, 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 that's seven factors. 
we call those those factors around performance design and there's performance design in every environment so again i'll repeat them have you got the right people in the right roles doing the right work working together in the right way focus on the right resources getting the right rewards driving for the right results and oftentimes would you believe in a lot of business environments one of the key areas that there isn't clarity on full clarity on is absolutely what are the right results we're all trying to drive for as a team so if you've got you know 9 10 12 people and you ask them what are the top 3 results that this team must deliver upon this week will you get all the same answers or will there be loads of different answers so in business and in sporting environments you'll always get clarity around what those top 3 are but in business environments because there's a lot of stuff going on you generally you some you know more often than not you don't get full alignment on that so alignment is one of the key factors that i would say around those factors of performance design that's that, that's crucial so that's only seven of the 20 22. i can go into other factors which we, we you know people will talk about and sometimes they put a label of culture over them we don't call these the factors that that we engage our engage teams uh, that we work with on called uh, we don't call them factors of culture we call them uh, performance dynamics the dynamics that exist in the team so what are the dynamics that exist between me and you and all, all the colleagues if we we're on the one team i'm sure you'll have people who have talked to you on the podcast before about trust and respect communication discipline and persistence sense of urgency tension and cohesion is an interesting uh, factor so you know are is the team that we're working with able to remain cohesive when tension goes up so when things aren't going so well or when there's high pressure towards the end of the week or end of the quarter can we be cohesive and can we maintain tension at the same time so tension and cohesion is an interesting 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 factor other factors around are we winning are we clear and are we winning and um, continuous improvement um, continuous improvement, I, I smile at a lot of the time in, in collective environments. Everyone says, yeah, we're, we're, we're fantastic at continuous improvement. We're absolutely brilliant at it. And then you ask and you respectfully challenge them, challenge people to say, well, you know, can you list down all the, all the areas of continuous improvement that you've worked on in the past six months? And, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily get as, um, get the long list that you might, you might have expected. So there are factors in, in performance, in, in what we call performance dynamics, which is some of the things that people talk about culture. Um, but as I said at the start, it's not just about structure and culture, it's about the ability to execute um, also. So, you know, I talked about have we clarity on where we're going? Um, are we clear on how we interact, you know, in the business environment with the various different stakeholders? That's, that's another key area. Have we got our structures? Have we got our reporting structures? Have we got visibility and control? Have we got our systems, our structures, our reporting? Um, and who is the driver of this metaphorical vehicle? Yeah, that's always an interesting question within the teams. Team will look around and say, well, who is, who, who's really leading this? Yeah. And so there, there are some of the, the factors that I'd say to you is, you know, it, it's complex. There's lots of various, there's lots of factors. We would say there's, there's, there's driver team machine, and then you break that down into 22 factors, and then that breaks down into loads and loads of data points. So that's, that's the, that's, that's the complexity of it. Um, but there's performance. Uh, gains in every single environment that we work in, right from the big pharmaceutical companies to we work in, right down to you know indigenous Irish companies. There's performance gains in every environment, and that's the wonderful thing, you know. And if that we, if if everybody can look in at the environment that they work in and say, where are the performance gains? There are performance gains there, and I guess that's one of the key factors that I'd say as well. You know, mindset obviously comes into it. You know, are you a glass half empty person or are you glass half full person? Yeah, and you know it doesn't really matter which you are, um, but you know, do you see things as potential loss or do you see things as gains? There's gains and losses in every environment. They remain losses if you don't do anything about them. They become gains if you do stuff about them. So that 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 that's what I'd say. Um, now I know I'm 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 talking there quite a lot, and um, and I'd kind of just hit pause on myself and I'd say go back to metrics. And um, we talk about zones of performance. Um, with the teams that we work with and particularly the the teams that we work with internationally you know they've, they're performing very well uh, they're hitting their kpis they're defined as high performance yeah they're defined as high performing teams we talk to them about zones of performance so operating in what what we define as the zone of peak performance so that's a zone and uh, we describe as where teams are, are um, capitalizing on 75 percent plus of their full performance potential now you might say to me, why 75? Well, let me let me explain that to you. 
Um, when you're exploiting more than 75% of your full performance potential, you are operating at 80 to 90% effectiveness, 80 to 90% of the time. If you, if you even say to yourself, okay, so that's working at, that's working at nine out of 10, all of this week, 90% of the time. That's a pretty high standard. And the challenge with operating in that zone of peak performance is that you can't stay there all the time. Because if you do stay there all the time, you'll get burned out. And so teams have to be cognizant of how much time they can spend in the zone of peak performance. Yeah. And then are there times where they actually have to come back into what we call the zone of normal? And the zone of normal for us is operating at a performance potential rate of between 55% and 74%. And it's okay to be in the zone of normal for certain tasks, but there's other tasks that you need to be in the zone of peak performance. And it's actually knowing what that work is when you need to be in the zone of peak performance and when you need to be in the zone of normal. And I give, I give, I give an example, even from myself. I'm in the zone of peak performance when I'm working with teams, uh, working on looking at their performance design, their dynamics, their ability to execute. And I love that. I'm highly engaged. I'm in the flow. Some people I'm sure will have talked to you about the flow. I think you mentioned Damien Hughes was on. To, uh, Damien's book's fantastic and the work he does is fantastic. But, you know, you're, in the, you're in the flow. You, you're just there. Yeah. But if you ask me to go and uh, look at our accounts for three or four hours in an afternoon, you're going to push me back into the zone of normal. Because it's not like my passion. Yeah. So it kind of does connect back into some of what you're passionate about, some of what you like doing. Yeah. And I think um I think you know it's so powerful in terms of 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 having having that that kind of viewpoint of peak performance. I know like we've talked a lot about businesses and you know you've worked with a lot of business, but I know a lot of sport people listening in the sporting world will certainly be able to relate to that, you know, peak performance and the dangers of driving for that peak performance and maintaining it all the time. And that burnout piece is certainly something that will resonate with with our listeners. Um, and another, another one I think as well that's sitting with me now is that although your models are so complex in terms of all the different, there's so many different factors that you work on, I think the exercise you gave to the listeners is something that I, I would definitely challenge our listeners to do is, you know, get your pen out, get your red, orange and green, you know, stickers or whatever it is and, and look at them factors. And I think, you know, just for our listeners as well, if you do want to go into any more in depth you know, I believe, you know, the Grow Pit Stop have a really good website form there as well that they can, they can leverage off. Yeah, I, 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 there's, there's another little practical, practical uh, thing I'd say to your listeners is um, we, we, we talk about uh, the, no, the nose cone of the Formula One car. Um, so you don't have to be, you don't have to like Formula One to, to engage with the concept of, of Formula One being a metaphor for business. Um, Formula One have been at high performance a lot longer than the professors or any other business um, business teaming uh, organizations who work on high performance. They've been at it for a long, long time. They've got the, the concept of a pit stop down to under two seconds. It's changing the wheels on a, on a car in less than two seconds and getting the car back out onto the track in, in high pressured, high, really high pressured environments. And when we talk about the nose cone. In Formula One, when the nose cone of the car gets damaged, they, the driver comes into the pit lane, stops at a line, and the nose cone is whipped off and a new one is whipped back on again. And the driver is back out again within seconds. Yeah? And the concept of, in business, can your strategy be adjusted as quickly as a Formula One nose cone? So when your strategy gets damaged out on the track, which inevitably it will in a business environment, you've got to be able to adjust it and be nimble enough with, with, with what parts of the strategy we can adjust. So getting your investors to think, of, think about these three things. Are we clear on the purpose of the projects that we're delivering? Are we clear on the top three results for those projects? And this week, are we clear on the priorities that are gonna help us unlock those results? We call that the three components of the nose cone. And I think what I find fascinating is, is, you know, this concept of why, why we're doing it. Are we all on the same page on why we're doing it? Um, and that's interesting. Uh, have we got the results and have we got the priorities? Um, and then how does that connect into each individual within the team and how does that help them win? And how does that connect to their, what, 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 what they're there to, to do? Um, and that's, uh, that's really, really interesting. There's a book called The Goldmine Effect. I think I mentioned it to you before. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, this concept of, you know, it's not always finding this elite person who has all this natural talent. Um, it's about finding people who are there, who want to be there, who want to work hard um, and who put, who put the effort in. And uh, I think the phrase is uh, talent that shouts and talent that whispers. Do you think, think, that, think that's the, the phrase that the author, um, the author uses? And I think there's talent, uh, there's talent that's whispering um, and uh, in, in many environments. And you've got to find the talent that whispers. Yeah? Um, and, and can you bring, can you corral that and bring that together so that inevitably it can, that whisper can grow louder and louder? Yeah, absolutely. And a, yeah, a great book, a really interesting read. And um, definitely, you know, we, we have a question coming down the line around resources. We might touch on that again. Yeah. Um, so, John, just the next question for you then, again, in terms of, you know, yourself or, or, or the team collective, whichever, whichever is sitting with you um, more, how important has reflection been um, for you or for the process of, of peak performance? I think reflection is it's absolutely critical. Um, can you know can a group of people come together and actually have a discussion and reflect on what's gone well and what's going well um, and what needs to be uh, what needs to be improved? And um, we talk about when we, we say to teams when you're talking about performance and potential, it's a test. It's a test of your ability. Uh, to dialogue and to engage in the concept of not just you know this performance did we win but it's the future of tomorrow potential so it's a test of your ability to dialogue with energy and and you've got to bring your own energy to it i'm not saying oh high energy jumping in everybody shouting and roaring but you've got to know your energy that you're bringing to these conversations test of energy test of energy of the team and test of energy uh, of the people um, and indeed test of the energy of the system that the people are operating what i mean by system is the environment they're operating so it's a test there um, the, the ability uh, to reflect and to not actually have to confirm what's going on in your head. Uh, so the concept of confirmation bias, am I so sure that I'm so right? Yeah, so it's a test of your ability not to have to think, okay, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right all the time. Um, so this is another, it's, an, it's another test. So reflection is the ability, the power to sit back and go, I don't have to be right. I'm not trying to confirm you know, that this is, this is the reason why something is right or wrong. Um, and, and to be the ability to sit with the discomfort, you know, if we, you and I are having a conversation about high performance in an environment that we work in, Peter, together, and we don't agree with each other, that we don't, we're actually able to sit with each other and be comfortable with the fact that we're agreeing to disagree. Yeah. Um, and that comes back down to trust and respect, which I'm sure some of your other listeners would have talked to you about. You've got to trust the person and respect the person. And I think there's an interesting thing about trust and respect. I can trust you but I may not respect you and vice versa. I can respect you and may not trust you. The two come together. And, and I'd say that to your listeners is trust and respect come together, like excitement and adrenaline come together, a level of excitement and adrenaline that we bring to a conversation, which is the ability to agree and disagree. Yeah. Um, I'd say reflection also is a test on your ability to use data, various different types of data. Um, and I'm struck by if you, um, if you think of sports like rugby and you think of 10, 15 years ago when they weren't using any data, and I know I see Enda McNulty up in the top right-hand corner of your screen there, and Enda be the person to talk to about this, but the whole idea of data in rugby uh, and, and the rugby players now go around with laptops and they're continuously looking at their data. 10 years ago, they didn't. Yeah? So we all have to be able to tap into the idea of data and the use of different types of data and alternative sources of data. Um, and that's what we would say to people, what are the sources of data? And it's not just in business environments, the challenge is right now is people are using an awful lot of data on individuals, but how can they measure the collective? Yeah, um, and you've got to be able to measure the collective. It's not just all about, all about the individuals. You've got to be able to measure the environment that they're working in, et cetera. So, you know, reflection, reflection is a test. Reflection is a challenge. Um, you know, what did you do well? What did you learn? Uh, and where do you start with the question? And I'm, uh, I think you know me well enough. I, I, I have my daughter who's mad into various different sports. And um, on Friday, she was riding her horse and she did well in her competition. And the first question, of course, I want to ask her afterwards is what went well? Yeah, you got to hold yourself back as a father not to ask that question too often because you don't want to let the person bring it. So, you know, sometimes what you'll find is different personalities will come in and like she comes off and she was said, this is what went well and this is what went bad. You know, so, you know, you got to listen to the people in the environment 
are they telling you what went bad first or what went well first? Yeah. And, and this is really interesting, reflecting on the wins that we've had in the past week. And here's another tip for your listeners. Can you ask your team for the next four weeks to write down three to five wins at the end of the week and share them together. So if you have a team of 10 people, now you have the bones of anywhere from 30 to 50 little wins. Yeah. And what do you learn from little wins? Little wins brings that resilience, brings that grit. We are winning. Yeah. Um, and so often uh, we do exercises in what we call our pit stops and we say, okay, let's stop. Grab a flip chart and I want you to list all the wins that you've had in the past two weeks as a team. And there's the energy kind of goes, oh, we don't, we won't have that many. And you get them up onto the flip chart and then all of a sudden people start writing and then they start going, all of a sudden you've got flip charts, pages of wins. Yeah. And those same teams, if I said to them, go up and write down all the things that are holding you back, they'd have jumped up and they'd have written them all down. Yeah. So you just got to get people into the habit. It's like a, it's like practicing, it's like, you know, practicing for a marathon. You do five mile, you do 10 mile, you, do, you keep building week by week. You got to practice this habit of picking out the wins would be one of the key things that, that I've noticed in business environments, particularly now. It's very difficult right now for teams working just, you know, in remote working, distributed environments. Obviously, we're going through, you know, the challenges with COVID. Um, you, you know, you do have to find ways to find what's going well. Um, and when you just create the environment for a conversation um, and for reflection on some of the things that are going well, people will find things that are going well. Yeah. And, um, and you, you got to build on those things. So reflection, absolute, abs absolutely, absolutely crucial. And I think my final thing on reflection is reflection doesn't have to be done in a meeting room. Reflection can be done up on the, up on the Wicklow Mountains. Reflection can be done on Dunleary Harbour. Reflection can be done out in Malahide. Reflection can be done walking down Grafton Street. You can do reflection as a group of people. It doesn't have to be in a meeting room. Yeah, great, great point. Um... And a really nice way to, to end it there in terms of the meeting room thing, because I think, uh, you know, I think when we win or we, we achieve something, the last thing we want to do is go back into a meeting room to discuss it. So I think that, yeah. that's a yeah. really, really, really good point. Um, so I think moving on, John, um, to the next question um, and maybe referencing back probably, but um, in terms of our listeners and maybe, you know, listen to all the different kind of, insight insights from from yourself and um talking maybe around the learning learning pathway um is there any particular resources that you have found useful or you could recommend to somebody that you know would like to develop their understanding of of higher peak performance well i i think the first resource is yourself i think this is the first resource um and checking in with yourself on you know, when you're thinking about high performance, what it means for you and then what resources you're going to draw on um, within yourself and with, uh, around you. Um, and it's, you know, so that, that would be my first point. Um, you know, what time, you know, so one of the things for me is, you know, what time of the day am I, am I better than other times of the day? Um, when do I know that my energy is going to dip? Um, what causes that energy to dip and that that's all resource your energy personal energy is is, is is your resource so I think that's something to be really really aware of um, you know and you know even you know the glass of water on calls or in meetings you know how you stay hydrated all of those things they're 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 all really important things and you know people say oh you know um, I, I say to them you know oh, you're tired interesting Tiredness is, is, you know, people do get tired for various different reasons, but what's going on in your body that causes that tiredness? Because that's a resource. So I think there's a whole pile of stuff that you could look, you could look on and look at on that. But I'm very conscious of right now in this environment when I'm looking through Zoom meeting lenses, I see a lot of tired people. Yeah, and I and I ask myself, okay, well, you know, what resources have they got at this point in time to leverage if they if they look and feel that tired? So that, that's number one. You know, I'm an avid reader. Um, we would read a lot. Our business in our business, we read a lot. Um. Two of, the, two of the best books that I've read this year, um, Nine Lies About Work, uh, was, was, was one, was a, is a great read, Nine Lies About Work. Um, and um, Doing Agile Right is a second book that I'd recommend. And Doing Agile Right, is not a it's not a book about uh, delivering uh, technology projects through agile ways of working. It's about agile systems and agile leadership. So there'd be two books that I would highly, highly recommend uh, to your to your readers if they're looking to build environments where they need to capitalize on 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 the on, on the collaborative um, 
in, in environment. Um, uh, anyone who's interested from a sporting perspective and would be curious about uh, maybe uh, the role Formula One can play as a, as a metaphor in business, what I'd say is uh, Mark Gallagher has written a great book. Um, uh, if you look up Mark Gallagher, he's one of the penultimate speakers, the top speakers in the world on how you bring principles of Formula One into business environments. So Mark's written, written a great book, as has Derek Daly, um, who's over in America. Uh, Derek Daly, for those of your viewers, is a, a, a Dublin man around the corner here in Dundrum, uh, Royst, uh, both uh, Formula One and NASCAR, and Derek has written some great, great books as well in, 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 in the field. So I'm big, into, I'm big into books, big into reading books, um, but I like the sport bent on the books. So, you know, um, I like that bringing, you know, what sport can bring to business, but then thinking about what business can bring to sport. Um, some podcasts like these, I think are interesting. One of the things that I've learned, so I think you're always learning is, um, I had a reluctance to listen to audiobooks. Um, so I was brought up in the environment where you read the book and you underlined it and you learned and you, you know, you put it back out onto a piece of paper for, for you know, college or school or whatever. Um, but in the past few weeks, I've been challenged, uh, which was I was preparing for something and, and someone said to me, well, why, why don't you just listen to it by audio book? Um, so I listened to three chapters of our own book by audio several times. Yeah, and you think it's your book, you wrote it. Well, you know what? you know, the, the information went in in a slightly different way. Um, and all of a sudden, it's expanded my thinking on, 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 on some of the topics. So that, that's what I'd say to you in, 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 in resources. The final thing I'd say is, you know, who's the person that you, who's the person that you look up to um, that gives you, a, gives, you an, gives you an energy? Who is that person? And it doesn't have to be an elite sports person. It could be your wife, it could be your daughter, it could be your father, it could be, anybody close to you um, and what is it about that person what are the resources that they draw um, and I have my one and I'm not going to share it with, with the listeners in terms of who the person is but the person is so disciplined and so committed to what they do um, that they give me inspiration so who's that what's that resource that's possibly for you yeah I can certainly yeah I can certainly relate to that I think in terms of that one person um, you know and I and also you know, you mentioned the audiobooks. I think I I I, I love reading um as well. Um, but I find so much value in the audiobooks. I think like even just putting in the earphones, going for a run and listening to an audiobook, like, you know, you can you can come in from a run or from my personal opinion, I can come in for a run with three or four new ideas that I wouldn't have ever thought of before or that I could look into. So yeah, certainly certainly um some massive insights in there for our listeners and uh, whether you'll thank me or not, I'm going to recommend the Grow Pissed Stop as well. As a book. <laughs> um, I think, you know, it's for me, it's something that's as as not a, you know, I suppose not an ad addicted fan of Formula One, which I think most fans are. Um, I do enjoy watching it, but I certainly have taken more from it and I certainly watch it differently having read the Grow Pit Stop. So I think our, our listeners will get some value there as well. Yeah, I think what's bubbling up for me as your as your comment and there, Peter, is uh, sometimes people say, you know, um, people haven't had a positive ex learning experience when they were young, you know, um, and as a result of that, books and learning through books and reading isn't for them. They like to learn. They like to learn through. Ex they like to learn through experience. Um, and sometimes they say that we, I, they don't have time. They're so busy. They're working 10, 12 hour days and they come home to their family, et cetera. And they'd say, you said you, you, you go out and you, you do a run and you listen to the audio book. What I'd encourage people to do is be curious, grab, a, grab some sort of book, get it onto your, your device, your phone or whatever. And next time you go for a walk, just plug in your earphones and just go with the flow and see what happens. And I suspect what will happen is they'll walk and they'll walk for an hour and it'll be the fastest walk they've ever done, they think, because the time will have flown yeah, because something new will have happened. And I'd say to people, be curious. Try it out. Yeah, absolutely. You couldn't, couldn't agree anymore. Um, so, just John, conscious of your time and, and, and the value that you've, you've also brought so far to, to our listeners, we might just move on to the last question, um, as I'm sure this will be as interesting as, as the rest of have been so far. Um, so I suppose pretty open ended one. Um, what is the most important thing that you've learned from your career to date? Um, on a personal front, not to be so hard on yourself. Um, I think, um, some people are really, really hard on themselves and, um, some people have such a high standard 
um, for their performance, um, that um, they don't need anybody to critique them. Um, in the sporting world, you don't need any of these elite athletes to read the newspaper um, for them to be told about their performance. They know, they know their performance. And I think the one thing I've learned in business environments too is that you know a lot of people know when they're doing really well and know when they're not doing so well so i say to people maybe don't be as hard on yourself as uh, as 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 um as you might be uh, so that's on a personal front not being so 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 hard on yourself um the other thing that i've learned and i've I, i've i've picked up from um and i think you know people will always say you're always learning and i think uh, it might sound like a cliche for the saying saying that but um, I had the opportunity to partner up with a company this year called Below the Line. And um, one of the uh, partners in Below the Line is a guy called Jerry Hussey. And um, Jerry said to me one day, he said, what's important now? Uh, W-I-N, what's important now? And I think the one thing that I've learned um, this year, uh, which has been really important for us in our business and indeed what we're bringing to, to our teams is to ask teams what's important now, W-I-N. And what's important now may be different tomorrow or the next day it's situational but focus on what's important now i think that's one of the key things and um, that i would have picked up and i encourage that when we're working out in, out in smurfit i encourage that when we're working with teams all around europe is ask the question what is important now to this team and focus on that great yeah um a great way to a great way to i think end it um in 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 the session on that i think um very powerful message for everybody and i know um you know both what, what's striking for me and i think in this session is the insight that both sports and business people will take from from our discussion um and you know i i, I see huge huge benefits there for for everyone so i suppose i'm going to i'm with, with time in mind john i'm going to i'm going to end it at that by by thanking you sincerely for coming on board and, and supporting what we're doing i think you know like everyone else you have a you have a busy schedule and with every session that goes on here i'm blown away by um the commitment of of guests to 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 what we've what we're doing here so um thanks very much i know everyone will get huge 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 benefit from it and um me personally and from the temple street foundation i just want to thank you for coming on board today no problem at all my pleasure thanks peter thanks john so that's it for another session of uh, High Performance Reflections. I hope everyone um, enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, like always, uh, to access the videos, you can access them free of charge on our YouTube channel. Just search High Performance Reflections. And that will bring you to our channel. Um, and also, if you'd like to donate to our very worthy cause of Temple Street Children's University Hospital, you can do that through our GoFundMe page at GoFundMe. Um, you can search, again, High Performance Reflections, or you can get the link directly at, on the GoFundMe page or the YouTube channel. So for now, all that's left to say is goodbye. I hope you enjoyed our session, and I'm looking forward to our next session. Take care, everyone.